Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about reading of the histone code by a code reader complex. So we have previously discussed that the uh, histone modifications lead to what we call a histone code. And this histone code may have certain meanings. So depending upon the modification state, whether uh, certain residues are methylated, acetylated or phosphorylated, uh, this would lead to a specified uh, um, result in the uh, in the gene expression. A gene can either uh, get expressed or it can get uh, silenced via heterochromatin uh, formation, or it can get inactivated, like in the form of X chromosome. So, how does this thing take place? Why would a certain code? Why would a certain pattern on these histone tails have an impact? and uh, can either lead to gene expression or silencing of a particular gene. So uh, what happens basically is that uh, we know about this uh, covalent modification on the histone tails. These could be acetylations, methylation or phosphorylation. So in either case this leads to uh, what we have we have discussed uh, the formation of a specific pattern, a histone code. So certain Residues would be methylated, some others would be acetylated, and some of them would be phosphorylated. So uh, this histone code can lead to different outcomes. And how does it lead to these different outcomes is because there are, I mean, for example, uh, in some cases a code can mean this, this histone code can also give a signal that the DNA is damaged and it needs to be rep repaired. And in some other cases it can uh, mean or it can signal that uh, that certain genes need to be silenced when in other case it, the, it could signal that the genes need to be uh, activated, they need to be expressed. So this code can uh, lead to different outcomes and how does it lead to different outcomes is because this histone code can be read by the reader complexes. And what are these reader complexes? So, so basically they consist of a larger protein what we call a scaffold protein and this scaffold protein is associated with certain smaller proteins so basically this as the name indicates this works as a scaffold for other smaller proteins and these smaller proteins basically can recognize and bind to these covalent modifications on these stone tails or on these modified residues so because this pattern is specific as we have previously discussed whether the um, first two residues here are methylated or acetylated, what is um, the status of the lysine at ninth position, whether it is acetylated or methylated. So this entire code would basically uh, lead to the binding of a certain um, code reading complex. So because this co code reading complex consists of, consists of uh, specific proteins, so this leads this makes it pretty uh, specific for binding to a certain region on the uh, on the chromatin so the, this the sequence on of the proteins on this scaffold protein needs to match with the sequence of uh, covalent modifications on the histone tails or on the histone coat so the sequence of the proteins on the scaffold protein or on the uh, code reader complex it depends upon the histone uh, coat on the chromatin. So if there's mismatch then this scaffold or this reader complex cannot bind to the histone proteins. Uh, when this uh, reader complex which consists of a scaffold protein and some smaller proteins, when this scaffold protein along with other proteins binds to this specific histone code then this can recruit certain other protein complexes and these protein complexes can either have some uh, catalytic activities means they can perform certain enzymatic functions or they can also work as uh, like multi-talking proteins which can lead to the binding of certain other proteins and then these proteins can carry out the job and this would ultimately the attachment of these uh, uh, proteins would lead to the activation of the certain genes or it can also lead to the silencing of the genes or certain other 
biological functions. So just to repeat that, there is a particular histone code on these histone tails which can be read by a reader complex. A reader complex consists of a scaffold protein which is associated with certain other smaller proteins which have a specific pattern. So the pattern of the proteins or the sequence of the proteins on this scaffold protein needs to match with the histone code. So if this match does not take place then this reader complex cannot bind to the histone code and the downstream processes cannot take place. But if there is a compatibility between the two then the reader complex would bind to this histone code and this would recruit certain other proteins which can either have catalytic activities or they can have additional binding sites for, the, for other proteins and other proteins can bind to it and then these proteins can perform certain uh, biological functions. They can switch on the genes or they can switch off the genes or they can silence them. So this is how the uh, histone code can be read by a code reader complex. We know uh, that the, uh, the DNA is organized in the nucleus in two forms. It's either in the form of euchromatin or it is in the form of heterochromatin. So euchromatin is the relaxed form of the chromatin while heterochromatin is the compact form of the uh, chromatin. So the genes inside the heterochromatin cannot get expressed. Why? We have previously discussed because the um, the, the activation machinery does not have access to the genes which are embedded inside the heterochromatin. This is also known as, uh, sometimes it's also known as a, a position effect variegation. So what is position effect variegation? means if you have a gene uh, which is active when it is present in, in, the, in the euchromatin, you take this gene and you put it into a region somewhere closer to the heterochromatin, there are chances that this, can, this gene can get silenced, not because there was something wrong with the gene, but because of its different position. So this is now positioned in a region which is either inside the heterochromatin or it is somewhere closer to the heterochromatin. So the heterochromatin can have an impact on this nearby gene and can silence uh, this gene. And why does this happen? This happens because uh, in addition to code reader complexes, we also have code writer complexes. If you can remember one of the previous slides, I, I can go back to that slide. Uh, yeah, this one. So we have previously discussed that chromatin remodeling um, uh, basically depends upon two things. I mean, uh, if you want to modify the chromatin, you can either have writer complexes or you can have eraser complexes. So Eraser complexes would erase acetylation and lead to the compaction of the chromatin and writers would uh, put on acetylation but they can also put on um, methyl groups and um, uh, lead to the compaction of the uh, chromatin. Readers would only read the code on the histone proteins, whatever there is. Whether it is in the heterochromatin or it is in the euchromatin, the job of the reader complexes is just to read the code and carry out the um, the, 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 the downstream processes. While writers and erasers, they can modify the chromatin itself. Readers do not modify the chromatin, they just read the histone code, while writers and erasers can modify the chromatin. And we have discussed that th there could be estyle transferases which can carry out estylation and estyl de-estylases uh, uh, de uh, de which can remove the estyl group or we have methyl transferases which can carry out methylation of the DNA. So, estylation would relax the DNA while de-estylation or methylation would lead to the compaction of the DNA and switching off of the genes. So, if you take a particular gene which is located in the euchromatin region and you put it somewhere inside the heterochromatin or somewhere closer to the heterochromatin, then this gene may get silenced and why does this happen is because we have these writer complexes we were just talking about. So these were the reader complexes and we have writer complexes. What do the writer complexes do? For example, we have a gene regulatory sequence here. So a gene regulatory protein, we have a regulatory sequence here and a gene regulatory protein can bind to this sequence initially. So uh, let's assume this is a euchromatin. So what happens that this regulatory protein recruits a writer enzyme. So this writer enzyme can be 
and a histone acetyl transferase which can carry out acetylation it can be a methyl transferase which can carry out methylation it can be a deacetylase which can remove uh, acetyl groups so whatever uh, the purpose is and depending upon whether it was a heterochromatin or euchromatin uh, for example for example if this is a euchromatin and it needs to be condensed then obviously the writer would be a histone methyl transferase or so that it can lead to the methylation of the histone proteins and ultimately compaction of the chromatin or it can also be a histone deacetylase which could remove the previous acetylation on the histone tails so in either case what is happening basically a gene regulatory protein binds to a certain uh, regulatory sequence on the DNA then it recruits a writer enzyme so this writer enzyme writes a code means it carries out certain covalent modification of the histones what we have previously discussed so when this modification is done this is followed by the recruitment of a reader writer complex so here we have two things there's a reader protein which will read this modification this code on the histone which was done by the first writer enzyme so the reader reads this code and it positions the writer enzyme onto the next nucleosome so that the histone tails on the next nucleosome can be uh, modified and then the second modification is read by another reader writer complex where the reader protein reads the modification on the on the previous histone proteins and positions the writer complex onto the next nucleosome so that it can carry out the modification on the next nucleosome so in in this case this is how the modification on the chromatin propagates and in addition it is not shown here there is also another ATP dependent chromatin remodeling protein so what does this protein do this protein when when this process takes place or the modification takes place the job of the remodeling protein so these are only reader and writer complexes they are not going to directly lead to the compaction of the DNA they are rather rather dependent on the DNA uh, uh, on, on the chromatin remodeling proteins so this chromatin remodeling protein would bind to them and lead to the compaction of the of the chromatin and this this, this protein would push the nucleosomes closer to each other so we call them ATP dependent chromatin remodeling proteins but anyhow so uh, this is how these reader writer complexes can spread the information along the chromatin and can either relax the chromatin or they can condense the chromatin so if we we were talking about the uh, position effect variegation so in this case what happens that uh, if, if a gene was if, if we insert a gene somewhere here and in, 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 in the neighborhood we have uh, euchromatin sorry uh, heterochromatin and the, the gene was located somewhere here the gene that we inserted into the euchromatin so this was euchromatin but it is clo closer to the heterochromatin so what happens that depending upon some previous modifications here or because of the binding of this regulatory protein here what happens a process of modification uh, of the of the chromatin initiates so this modification leads to the condensation of the DNA so if the DNA is condensed or if this is uh, modified uh, leading to the compaction of the DNA or leading to the formation of the heterochromatin then the gene that we placed somewhere here in the euchromatin region can also get embedded into the heterochromatin because of these modifications so a euchromatin would be converted into a heterochromatin so with this we have a problem the problem is that this modification can carry out for longer distances and if this keeps on happening the entire chromosome we have the DNA in the form of chromosomes so the entire chromosome or even maybe one more than one chromosomes can get uh, can get converted into the in, in, into heterochromatin and if this happens then lots of genes would not be able to get themselves expressed so at certain regions this needs to be stopped so we need 
some mechanism so that this modification does not um, it does not carry on for, for for like for always so once it is initiated then it it, it travels a longer distance so we need to halt it somewhere um, at, at, at a certain point so uh, in order to carry out this job there are certain barriers which can stop spreading of the heterochromatin formation we have discussed it this this was euchromatin and if this process keeps on uh, keeps on uh, working along the nucleosomes this will this will uh, convert the entire euchromatin into heterochromatin and all the genes would ultimately be silenced but this needs to be stopped how is this stopped the chromatin uh, generally has some barriers which protect the this 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 long distance effect of heterochromatin onto the euchromatin here are a few examples uh, for example uh, for for a chromatin which is lying closer to the nuclear membrane we have a nuclear pore here and then certain we have certain barrier proteins which can bind to the dna uh, um, at one end and they can bind to the nuclear pore at the other end so these barrier proteins does not allow these code reader and writer complexes to proceed further towards the euchromatin so this heterochromatin region remains separate from this euchromatin region so if something is altered in this region this would not have an impact on this euchromatin region because of the presence of this barrier protein in the middle uh, in a second scenario we do not have a barrier protein here like it is not anchored on to some nuclear pore rather we have a different type of barrier protein now this barrier protein masks the euchromatin certain nucleosomes which are lying closer to the heterochromatin and this masking does not allow the writer complexes to write any code or to bring about any uh, covalent modification on these uh, uh, on this is on the on the strong proteins on these nucleosomes so if something uh, travels from this direction towards the on in in and 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 converts the euchromatin into heterochromatin this needs to stop here because there is no chance that a writer complex can um, carry out modification on the histone uh, protein here because of the presence uh, on the histones here because of the presence of the barrier protein and uh, a third scenario we have we have a different type of barrier protein which has been recruited here in between uh, the heterochromatin between the heterochromatin and the euchromatin now this barrier protein has a binding site on the dna and it has got an enzymatic function and what is its in, uh, enzymatic function that it can uh, either inhibit the the modification uh, which is which which can possibly take place by the writer uh, complexes here or it can also remove what was uh, the code that was written here on this histone by the by the writer proteins for example uh, this protein here uh, the, the the writer complex adds a methyl group here it carries out methylation or it is responsible for deesterylation so if it methylates this histone protein here this enzyme is going to demethylate it it is going to remove the methylation or if this enzyme, the writer enzyme here, removes, it was a deestylase and it removes a previous estylation, then this protein here is going to again add an estyl group onto this, um, onto this nucleosome so that further effect or further impact of the writer complexes towards the euchromatin can be prevented. So this is how different types of barriers can stop spreading of the um, heterochromatin. So I think uh, that is sufficient for today. Thank you very much for your attention.